great IPO rush that we saw last year generated massive buzz and attracted a bunch of new investors into the primary markets. Now, there were many companies that went public, including some high-profile unicorns, preceded by hype and hoopla and followed in some cases by a reality check. So what is life like for a company after listing? I'm going to find out. From Mumbai, I have the Sapphire Food Story. Now, that's the company that runs outlets like KFC and Pizza Hut in India and Sri Lanka. I'm at a new store in Bandra in Mumbai and I'm here to meet the group CEO Sanjay Purohit. Remember, the company went public in November last year and the retail portion was subscribed eight times. Lovely to see you. Life has changed well, a lot, isn't it? And welcome to KFC in Bandra Hill Road, our second store. Yeah. Uh, new format, uh, great store. So a lot of time has passed, but the sale marketer is right I up know. front and center. So in food, unless you're passionate about what yeah. you do, I mean, it doesn't come up, you know, it doesn't mm. come through to the customer. So <laughs> I think I'm passionate about KFC, I'm passionate about... Pizza yeah. Hut, I'm passionate about Sapphire Foods. I know. This is the format that you all are now betting on at Sapphire Foods for KFC, isn't it? Tell me a little bit more about that. So our uh, mm. store on Linking Road is mm. like a flagship store. Yeah. Everyone knows about it. Yeah. If you want directions on Linking Road, it yeah. is turn left from KFC or Meet go me ahead. at the KFC me store. At, me at the KFC. But that store, as well as it does, mm. is just not sufficient to cater to the demand in and around this mm. place. And therefore, we said, let's open a second store, Hill Road. I mean, a, a kilometer and a half away. Mm. And yet, the store has done well, not cannibalized. That store that store continues to grow. And now, when I think about it, mm. I, mean, I envisage KFC to be a neighborhood restaurant. Mm. Pizza Hut to be a neighborhood restaurant. Mm. And therefore, in this neighborhood, Bandra, Santa Cruz, we could perhaps have four... Uh, KFC is four Pizza Huts. Mm. The small store is also a format that's going to work for you guys because people are taking away more, people are ordering, uh, you know, via delivery services more. Is that something that's a direct outcome of the pandemic? This has been going on f for the last five, six years. Mm. Uh, we inherited large stores. Mm. We have started to cut down the size of mm. the store. Mm. So. At a 1500 square foot store, we've got 40, 45 covers, mm. ideal for a neighborhood restaurant. Mm. And then you're able to cater to delivery, mm. to dine in and to take away. And then we are able to improve accessibility. Mm. I think that's the you know, theory behind or the driver right. behind these smaller stores. Is it also uh, because retail is, uh, I mean, space, especially in prime locations like this is also very expensive. I mean, are those factors? Oh, undoubtedly, the smaller format just allows us mm. optimal capex. And we were spending 1.7, 1.8 crores mm. behind the KFC earlier. Mm. Perhaps now it's gone up slightly. So it's optimal capex. Mm. And yet the store delivers mm. uh, the kind of returns. And paybacks have improved dramatically as a result of the smaller store format. Delivery is now contributing to... Almost 50% of revenues, is that for KFC or for Sapphire Foods overall? So delivery at one stage was 100% hmm. during the yeah. peak of the pandemic. Yeah. As restrictions have yeah. um, lifted, yeah. dine-in has come in, delivery has con hmm. continued to be at the same level. So in KFC today, delivery contributes about 37-38%. In Pizza Hut, possibly 45%. But you know, we've spoken a lot. We are in a KFC. I can smell... Uh, finger licking good <laughs> fried chicken here. Yeah. So, I, I mean, you must have something. What will you have, Anuradha? Popcorn. Popcorn. That's, that's yeah. <laughs>
come to India without making a and and continue to survive and oh wow, oh, our chicken popcorn you. is here. Here's your chicken popcorn. Oh man. And here's oh. a bucket for you. No, really, yeah. like really, like I <laughs> said, you, Sanjay, thank this so is much. thank you. This yeah. is this is my guilty pleasure. Yeah. I'm this gonna is the have max one I'm gonna also. Do. I'll... Oh my god. No MNC can come to India and not have a twist for the Indian palate and wallet, isn't it? You're quite right there, Anuradha. So, we had a rice bowl, hmm. which was quite popular. Hmm. But this is a different take on the rice bowl. Hmm. And hence, uh, biryani and hmm. chicken, hmm. I think it's, it's fantastic. And it's doing really well. Hmm. And uh, quite surprisingly, it's doing well in markets that are non-traditionally rice-eating markets. So, the north does really well, hmm. parts of west does well. And in the traditional rice-eating markets, hmm. perhaps a little less better than uh, the north and the west. In November, this very uh, milestone moment was achieved by Sapphire Foods. And I can see when companies list and, you know, when it's the function at the NSC. I think yours was at the NSC, right? Yes. So there's a little emotion that's, or a lot of emotion that's on display. What did it mean to take Sapphire Foods public, um, you know, and how has your life and your work changed as a result? So, um, Sapphire Foods came into existence six years ago. Yeah. At that time, Yum believed that a two franchisee mm. model mm. in India mm. was the way to go. So, they had an... Uh, Indian promoter-led franchisee. Yeah, which is Devyani. And then they said, let's get in hmm. another kind hmm. of franchisee, hmm. professional promoters, uh, led by professional management and hmm. governed by professional hmm. uh, abode. And over the last six years, our performance has actually vindicated that the two franchisee strategy in India hmm. is perhaps the best way for Yum to go. How much has your life changed after listing? You know, you talked about what it costs today to set up a store. Earlier, you wouldn't have thrown a figure out like that if you didn't need to. Today, everything is up for scrutiny. Every number, every decision, every bit of money spent. How does that affect your working? Give me a peek into what life after listing is like. So, from an operating performance mm. level, mm. nothing has changed, Anuradha. Mm. I think my, my personal belief, and that's the belief in the organization, yeah. that if we run a great business yeah. with great people, with great governance, that's the way to go. Finally, valuations are an outcome of all of these three yeah. things. So, from an operating cadence perspective, there's nothing changed. Yeah. There was incredible scrutiny on our numbers because we had prior, five private equity yeah. investors. So, in any case, we were used to that scrutiny of numbers. Today, just our investor base is much larger. Mm. That's it. I think what has changed is our the pride that our employees mm. feel mm. in Sapphire Foods. Mm. Six years ago, people were joining because of me. Mm. Today, they join because of what Sapphire Foods means to them. Mm. They are owners in the organization. So last year, before the IPO, we rolled out ESOPs to 1,000 and mm. uh, 1,000 people, including our restaurant general managers. When you look at analyst reports and you read them or you look at them, there's a target price for Sapphire Foods at this point. The offer was some 1,180 rupees a share. It listed above. How does all this feel? When you look at these cues, these, these pricing cues that are coming from external sources, uh, based on the analysis or the bets people are making uh, on Sapphire Foods performance, how does this affect you? Today, all the reports say buy Sapphire Foods. So that's mm. the first thing. Mm. Target think, price 1700 Correct. I don't look at the uh, stock price, Anuradha, at all. Perhaps once in a uh, week, mm. our promoters are exactly the same. They say, let's build a good business. Mm. I think the tenets and the fundamentals of a good mm. business is this. Can you deliver consistent, high-quality performance? Mm. And today, look at the COVID pandemic. We've been the best performing QSR chain. Mm. But can you Good. afford to tune out all this buzz and chatter uh, once your stock goes public? I mean, in February, there was this 
run up, right? And it reached for possibly a lifetime high so far. This must be impinging on you in some way. And uh, um, even if you are guided by your long-term vision, I, I want to understand how you cope with these yeah. external factors. Yeah. So it's easy to get hmm. flustered hmm. or uh, be ecstatic when the share price goes up or goes down. Hmm. I think it's important to remain calm here. When I speak to investors, they tell us this consistently. The people who have invested in us and continue to buy in us, they say, deliver great performance, deliver great governance, be transparent in your disclosures. And this is what we are attempting. We have to understand that we are a new company, a new entity. Most investors don't know about us. We are a different kind of uh, company also. Private equity, professional promoter, yeah. professional management, professional board. So it takes time to build trust. If I go back six years, it took time to build trust with our private equity investors. Mm. Why should that be anything different mm. for our investors? Mm. As long as we deliver great performance, mm. we are great with our disclosure. I'm quite confident that people will look at Sapphire Foods as an incredible opportunity to invest in. You mentioned that Sapphire Foods is one of two franchise holders for Yum brands or Yum uh, in India. Uh, when you look at the other company that also listed last year, there is some sense that because this is private, because Sapphire is private equity uh, owned and professionally run at some point, given that that's bigger and it's the same set of brands, that there will be a merger. When you hear things like that, which is also a sense of suggestion that you all are here to seek value and then exit at some point. How does that, how do you react to that? What do you make of that? So the simple uh, fact here is six years ago, Yum could have consolidated its business with one franchise. Mm, mm. They chose to go with a two franchisee model. Mm. They chose to go with a different kind of a mm. franchisee, our franchise. Mm. And I think our performance has vindicated that. When COVID happened, Anuradha, we thought, my word, mm. we are going to go back a couple of years. Yeah. But in these two years, it's perhaps the best thing that happened mm. to our company. Our improvement in financial metrics have actually been the best. Mm. FI20, our operating, mm. um, our operating EBITDA was 5%. Mm. Today, it's 11.5%. Mm. Our uh, net profit was negative 12%. Today, it's 3%. So, this execution mindset and this accent on governance mm. has really vindicated Yum's decision to say two franchisee model in India works. Hmm. And they've done this in many, many markets. All over Asia, you see multiple franchises. So are you ruling out a possible consolidation at some point? Oh, completely so. I think we've got our story. We are building ourselves to be a restaurant operator platform play. So we are so excited about KFC and Pizza Hut and the opportunities. But I'm not ruling out a third brand or a fourth brand. That is the kind of operating scale, capability, back-end that we are building. I think we, we are building that to be a thousand restaurant, two thousand restaurant kind of an operation. Two brands, three brands, perhaps four brands. Hmm. So that's our story. in the Sapphire Foods basket is Pizza Hut. What is happening there? Because there's a sense that because of the mall location for most of them or many of them, that things, recovery has been a little different from KFCs in the last two years. So we've been very passionate about the Pizza Hut brand. Mm. And there are things that work really well with mm. the brand and there were things that needed fixing. What needed fixing were two things or were perhaps three things. One was value needed fixing. And therefore, on April 19, we redid our menu. Hmm. And redid our menu to bring value in a very Pizza Hut manner. So, Pizza Hut is about meals. And therefore, our meal for one, meal for two, meal for four, unlimited meals. Hmm. And today, in terms of value, Pizza Hut is fantastic. Better than even the uh, competitor. Hmm. Second one was delivery. Hmm. So, pre-pandemic, our delivery proportion would have been about 20%. Today, it's about 40-45%. We have worked with our own app. We have worked with the aggregators. 
and we have worked on therefore improving the delivery experience. So that is three. The last part was fix the mm. new store economic model. So again, like KFC, we used to have two and a half, three thousand square foot stores. Mm. Today we have compact 1200 square foot stores. For Pizza Hut also. For Pizza Hut, 45, 50 covers, mm. tight kitchen. My word, they really deliver well. Mm. And again, we are able to improve accessibility as a result of this. So, and then see how we have started to crank up the innovation hmm. pipeline. That Momo Mia pizza, all of us, first time when we heard it, we said, my God, what is this? But when I saw it and I ate it, it was sensational. It happens only in India, right? It happens only in India. <laughs> it's an Instagram worthy uh, pizza. How do you ensure, uh, A, the brand experience, both in taste and presentation is the same? Because the customer doesn't know, you know, Sapphire Foods owns this outlet and, uh, you know, Devyani owns another outlet. And also, what about the communication, the brand communication? How does that work? So, apart from Sapphire and Devyani, hmm. Yum India has a strong presence. Hmm. So, Yum has a strong presence right. in India. Both Pizza Hut as well as KFC. Hmm. Now, Yum KFC India would be responsible for both advertising, communication hmm. and innovation. Right. And all three of us come together in a co-op hmm. to really decide what do we want to do from an um, innovation perspective, what are the new products that we launch, hmm. pricing. So each function, hmm. there is a tripartite co-op meeting. So the what you see in a store is standardized right across the yeah. country. It has Price, to be. Yeah. It has to be. Pricing is standardized. All NPD will be tested out in smaller markets. Right. So, but finally, launched nationally, all restaurants, whether it's Sapphire or Devyani together, finally, this is how it is presented to the consumer. Tell us a little bit about Sri Lanka because the Sapphire Foods franchise is for India and Sri Lanka. And I think Maldives? Yes. So, what Sri Lanka, uh, how have your stores and their Pizza Hut I think is the leading brand, isn't yes. it? So, how have your stores been affected there? Are they running full time? We are hearing of power shortages. There's political uncertainty, social unrest, economic crisis. How is all that affecting you? So, you're right. Hmm. Uh, I've been to Sri Lanka on work and on hmm. uh, pleasure for the last 15-20 years. I love the country. It's such a beautiful country. Hmm. And therefore, what is happening from yes. a macro sense is yeah. saddening. But we've got such a strong business, hmm. Anuradha. Hmm. And there are reasons for it. Hmm. One is, actually, while there is inflation, hmm. also there's a lot of money in consumers' hands. Hmm. So, so, every family has someone or the other in hmm. the Gulf who is remitting money. One year ago, they got 200 to a dollar. Hmm. Today, they're getting 350, 360 hmm. to a dollar. So, actually, there is money available hmm. and people want to spend that money. So, that's one. Number two is, if you want, so clearly there are fuel shortages, there's electricity shortage. Yeah. That has so your, sadly... So, your stores are open for yeah, so shorter hours, right? that has sadly wiped out unorganized... Uh, market, which in any case was small in Sri Lanka. But for us, hmm. we've got the wherewithal to continue to operate. So, one person hmm. is always at the fuel pump to get diesel to be able to run our Generator. stores. Okay. So, unless there is curfew, actually we are running our stores. In that market, we've got delivery capability hmm. better than anyone else. Hmm. So, in your home, you don't have gas or electricity to cook. And therefore, you have to come out and eat. Mm. And where would you eat? You'd eat at a pizza hut. Mm. So, our advantage, our execution advantages mm. are really playing out in that market. I'm seeing, we are seeing tremendous transaction growth and same store sales growth. Mm. And therefore, this is what but we tell But expansion might slow down, right? So, last year, we opened 25 stores on a mm. base of 70. 25 stores on a base of 70. We came to 95 stores. Mm. We believe that we'll double this in 3-4 years. Nothing has changed from an expansion perspective. Mm. We spoke to a lot of young markets who've gone through similar, mm. uh, uh, similar uh, situations at a country level. Mm. All of them come back and say, double down on the business. 
great opportunity to actually build right. very strong competitive position. Mm. I was speaking to the Sri Lankan team yesterday mm. and they are saying we are now hopeful mm. of things stabilizing mm. over the next four, six months. That's good. That's good to hear. But we are going, Sri Lanka. Yeah, yeah, and we are going, yeah. uh, you know, uh, gangbusters in that market. Sanjay, here in India, we are seeing the RBI action to control inflation. We are, uh, you know, the, the, the environment seems to be slowing down, right? Growth is slowing down. How is? The, are you seeing any of that affect your consumption where it comes to your uh, product portfolio? Because we do know that I think some price hikes you've had to. Uh, put in place, Correct. right? Inflation is now across the board. Hmm. So on food product, on food, hmm. on food raw materials, packaging materials, capital equipment, hmm. inflation is right across. And this kind of inflation I have not seen at least for the last 10, 15 years. Hmm. So it is a concern. We have trying to raise prices but less than general inflation. Hmm. So Perhaps in the short run, gross margins might be in, uh, impacted, but we will recover through other um, mm. belt tightening mm. initiatives and still deliver profitability as per earlier. If we keep inflation, our price increases below consumer inflation, and this has been my old consumer marketing theory, you will get more affordable, mm. therefore consumers will, um, yeah. uh, will come to you. So at this moment, I mean, you, we have to remember last year, April, May was poor for us yeah. because of the uh, second wave yes. of lockdown. Yes. At this moment, we are still seeing very strong transaction hmm. growth. And yes, we have taken price increases about 9% on KFC, 2.5% yeah. on Pizza, Pizza. Hut. And we'll take perhaps another mm. two and a half, two, two and a half percent. Transactions are growing, mm. but it's wait and watch. Mm. Inflation is concerning, undoubtedly. It's making the cost of our stores go up. Yeah. I think this is um, wait and watch. Right now, transaction growth, volume growth is healthy. How do you prepare for this kind of uncertain world? It was world is always uncertain, but never more than at this point of time. I think mm. the most important thing to do is to remain calm mm. and collected in such volatile circumstances. Mm. So if my team sees me mm. being jittery, I think uh, that's not good. During the COVID pandemic, also the same thing happened. Mm. We said there's nothing that we have done. Yeah. So just let's first accept what has happened. Yeah. Our business came down to zero. In my career, I've never seen a daily sales report that said zero, Anuradha. <laughs> and then when, I, when our stores were closed for 10 days, mm -hmm. so then it's going back to the basics. Let's get our stores open. Mm -hmm. Let's take care of our team members. Let's take care of customers. Let's build the business slowly. And I think that focus on execution, that calmness, yeah. That calmness, therefore, we convey to our investors who are also jittery at one point in of time. Of course, yeah. And I think there's just too much, while too much is happening, you have to just be as, as calm, as collected. It's not easy. Mm -hmm. There is a hundred things going on in your mind, in your heart, but there's no other option. Sanjay, final question. You've used one word repeatedly through our conversation today, and that word is execution. When you have investors look at you, at your quarterly results, at your interviews, at your investor meets and analyst calls, how do you want them to look at execution and the emphasis you have on execution at Sapphire Foods and what kind of value should they ascribe to it? So strategy is sexy, yeah. but if you ask me, execution is sexier. Mm. And really there are three things to execution. Customer experience, people, the back-end operations, transparency and disclosures. I think this is the mantra to great execution. It is every day. Every single day. Sanjay, lots of Thank good luck. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you so much.